present my screen. And record. Okay, part two. <laughs> Welcome to the marching band. Um, Brighton High School Marching Band Step Off Meeting. My name is Michaela Mortensen. Um, if you tried to chime in on our live stream, um, my computer just decided to die. Um, I had, think I had too many programs going. Even though I experimented with it, it just didn't seem to want to work. So um, this is me recording a video. My awesome staff boosters and uh, middle school teachers were willing to stick around and do a round two so we could just have a nice clean video. Um, so again, my name is Miss Mortensen. I am the um, high school band director. Um, I will be the one in charge of the marching band, but I'm not going to be able to do it alone. Um, so without further ado, let's go ahead and start with our introducing, introducing our staff members. So um, within a marching band, we have several sections. Um, I can't do it all. So um, just to really quickly break it down, we have the brass and woodwinds, just like you would in a normal, you know, sit down band. Um, we have staff members for that. We also have a percussion section. One part of that is a battery. That is our um, drum line people that move around the field and play on the drum line equipment. And then we also have the front ensemble, those people, um, and they don't always have to be percussionists. If you have a great pianist in your area, you know, they might have a home in the front ensemble, but that is um, percussion that is at the front of the field. They don't march. Um, it usually involves some sound, design stuff and all kinds of cool things. Um, and then last but not least, we have our amazing color guard people. Um, so color guard um, help um, complement the band visually. They are um, usually seen doing some sort of choreography, throwing um, weapons, not real ones, as well as flags. So um, I'm gonna go ahead and have our color guard staff jump in, starting with Miss Elliot Ramirez Rogers one more time. Um, and she's just gonna introduce herself. Go ahead, Elliot. Hello, like she said, I'm Elliot. I have been doing guard for half of my life. I've been spending for I guess, but over six years, um, I went to Pleasant Grove High School. There I did color guard. I played the bassoon. I was drum major. I just, every part of the band, I've been part of it. So I'm really excited to be involved with your guys' band and to, yeah, to be here. Awesome. Thank you, Elliot. All right, let's jump into Hunter. Hunter is our other color guard staff member. Hi, y'all. Uh, my name is Hunter. As she said, uh, I'll be the tech at uh, Brighton High School for the Color Guard caption. I've been doing Color Guard for about six years as well. I started at Provo High School my junior year. Cute girl got me into it, so I decided to keep doing it and get better than her. Um, <laughs> after that, I decided to go into uh, Wasatch Independent Color Guard, and I did that for about three years as well. Um, and I've also been teaching at Spanish Fork High School. Uh, I taught as a tech there for two years and was main caption head this last year. Um, so I'm really excited to see where this goes with Brighton High School. I'm really excited to be teaching all your guys' kids and just have a great season. Thank you so much. Awesome. All right. Jumping in now to our percussion staff. Um, we've got Mr. Andrew Berry. He is our percussion caption head. Go ahead, Andrew. Hey there, y'all. How are we doing? My name's Andrew, and I'm super excited to meet everybody. I've met most of you already at least once, but to but to actually hear you play and see it again, that'll be great. Um, I've been doing this drumline thing for a really long time, um, at least going on 16 years now, so I'm sort of the folky on staff. I'm definitely going to be the old guy, but we're going to have a lot of fun. I'm excited to see what you guys can do. Awesome. Another percussion staff member. We've got Josh. Go ahead, Josh. Hey, yeah, uh, I'm Josh, Josh Hensley. Uh, I have been doing percussion for about 10 years or so. Uh, I've drummed with a lot of groups, you know, Battalion, uh, Impact, Gold Spike, around the area. Really excited to be able to work with you guys. Uh, I love, you know, teaching drumline. I love percussion and being able to, to help. So I'm glad to be here. 
Awesome. Thank you, Josh. All right, jumping over to the woodwind caption, um, we've got Mary Nelson. She'll be working primarily with our woodwinds, but she'll be working with all um, of the band as well. Go ahead, Mary. Hey, everyone. I'm Mary Nelson, like uh, Miss Mortensen said. I, a clarinet player myself, uh, I'll be working with all the woodwinds. I'm super excited. Um, I graduated from American Fork back in the day. I worked with Westlake for six years, and I'm excited to get back to working with marching band again. Awesome. Thank you, Mary. And last but not least, we've got Marcos. <laughs> you changed your hair. Yeah, I changed my hair. It was sticking to my mouth. So uh, what up, Marcos? I've six years in marching band. Um, six of those on baritone. The last two was really sick. Um, marching band is what made me who I am. I was a really quiet kid before. Now I'm pretty wild, you know what I'm saying? So, yeah, I'm happy to work with you guys. You're awesome. Great. All right, staff members, if you'd like, you're excused to head out, but I appreciate you guys coming in and um, going round two. So, um, again, that's our awesome staff. They'll be working with all of you next year. I'll be sending out more contact info. Um, really quickly, um, I just want to acknowledge that Mr. Tayez um, and Ms. Perkins were here as well. Um, and if I could find Ms. Perkins, here she is. Um, they, they're just um, really great people to work with in our vertical team. Um, we really work hard to make sure that the Brighton cluster um, is strong and um, it starts with them. So we're, they'll be involved as well as much as they can be on top of their other busy schedules. So thank you, um, our middle school friends. Um, we're excited to have you as well. So again, staff members, you're more than welcome to stick around, but you do not need to um, because the rest of it will just be me talking through logistics. Um, really quickly, I want to also introduce um, our booster presidents. Um, we've got Jeanette and Eric Middlestat here. Um, oh, you guys are wearing your shirts. I love it. Um, so they um, will be talking to you a little bit about booster stuff. Um, when would you guys rather do that? Um, like after the Why, Why Marching Band? Is that okay to just kind of give a little intro? Um, yeah, awesome. that's fine. Wonderful. And then we have Renee Hunter, um, our vice pr president for the booster organization. Um, it really can't be done without those amazing people. So they'll be talking to you in just a few moments. Um, okay. Making sure I'm following my agenda that wouldn't print because life. Um, <laughs> okay. So um, if I didn't say so already, if you didn't catch it on the live stream, um, we do have some phenomenal drum majors coming our way as well. Um, it was a tough decision that we had a bunch audition and go through that whole process, but we um, ended up with two amazing kids. Um, we have Miss Haley Tim and Miss Yvonne Sun. So I'm sure the high school kids know who those people are, but um, just know that if you're an incoming freshman, you, you've got a treat. Those are both great people. And even the people who didn't quite make drum major are just phenomenal humans. So um, we're, we're just really excited to have them on board. Um, you'll be seeing some stuff coming from them. Okie doke. So jumping in, why marching band? Um, again, I, I had all these things prepared so it could be part of the live stream and you could enjoy this in person with me. But um, I went out to our community and asked um, everybody, why, why marching band? What makes you, what made you stick around? What made you keep doing what you're doing? Um, you know, what did you learn from these experiences? And I just got overwhelming responses. It turns out band kids like talking about band. Um, so I tried to compile them as much as I could. So anyway, without further ado, here is why marching band. Hey Bengals, Nate Siemens here. I'm the director of bands at Snow College and former band director at American Fork High School. Why marching band? Well, I will tell you that marching band changed my entire life. And I know it will with you too. You will have an opportunity to lead. You'll have an opportunity to be influencers in your school. And most of all, you'll be able to make history by being part of the very first Brighton High School marching band. Go Brighton, best of luck, and I can't wait to see you on the field in the fall. To me, the most important is that you will learn how to be the best version of you that you can possibly be. Take my word for it, just do it. I promise you won't regret it. 
Hey, Bengal Band, it is Mr. Giddings. You probably know me as the guy that uh, wore your uniform and modeled it for the first time, which was a really fun experience for me. Um, I, I just think it's so cool that you guys get to start this experience, and I helped start a marching band myself. I know how cool and exciting it is, but if I could really describe why marching band is incredible in just one quick thing, it is just, uh, it's hard to describe the culture that gets created, and you really make the best friends of your life. Good luck, Brighton Bengals. I am so excited to see you this season, and uh, go, go Bengal Band. I have an even better question. Um, why not join Marching Band? Um, it's been an amazing experience for me. It's been an amazing experience for all of my friends. Um, I think the first reason why you should join Marching Band is because you get 50 automatic friends. Also, congratulations on having a Marching Band. I'm super excited to watch you guys and see you guys learn and grow throughout the season. Anyways, congrats again and good luck. The one thing that is the big why for me with Marching Band is it's a place to belong. Um, it's a place to come together with people and get to know people, spend time together, and I think there's a lot of power in that, um, especially in this day and age where we're living in this crazy time. So come and belong with the marching band. We'd love to have you. Um, can't wait to get to know you. And go Bangle Band. I was in marching band and I played the trombone. I absolutely love marching band, mostly because on the weekends, I got to go travel with my friends to a new city, kind of go play for other people. We had so many competitions that we went to and it really was just like an awesome bonding experience for me and my friends. So, um, I would 100% recommend doing marching band. It was my absolute favorite thing in high school. I was so sad when I couldn't do it anymore. So, good luck, Bengal marchers. I did marching band for four years of high school and four years of college and loved every second of it. First of all, I just loved the community that it built. I had a great network of friends, especially in college because of it. And in college, I got to do a lot of fun things because we went to London and played for the Wembley of the English Soccer Cup Championship one year. I've marched for several NFL teams um, and have close-up pictures of some really famous players that you've never heard of before because this was a long time ago. But I had a great time. Lots and lots of fun. You should do it. Good luck, Brighton. Hi guys, I started marching back in the ninth grade with your band director, Ms. Mortensen. My new is Michaela, and I loved it. Marching band is something that really focuses on the group, but the individual is very important. The other best part about marching band is the community surrounding it. The band parents, the other students, the friends that you make in the other bands across the state. It's an activity like none other, because even though it's competitive, you're all cheering for each other. And the world of marching band really changed my life and my family's life, and you won't regret it, I promise. Your music arranger for this upcoming, your very first inaugural, which I'm so excited for you, your inaugural season. I've been thinking about this for a long time while I was trying to get together for your video as to why marching band. And I can just tell you that the marching arts itself not only provides a very beautiful and artistic musical outlet for you all as individuals, as artists, believe it or not, I may not think you're all you're like, I'm just a band kid. I just do band. Well, you are an artist. You're an artiste at the highest level. And I, I just love music itself. And because of that love of music, that made me love and understand marching band that much more. And that's why I've devoted a majority of my life to the marching arts. Like, without it, I wouldn't have the connections that I have, the friendships that I have, the people, the philosophies of teaching that I have now. It's just, there's so much I wish I could say about marching band and why to do it. It just opens up your life to so many different expectations. I'm excited for you all, and I wish you guys the best in the season to come, and I cannot wait to meet you all, and I cannot wait to hear you play my notes. All right, see you later. Bye. Hello, my name is Steve Hendricks. I'm the retired director of bands from Davis High School. What I thought I would do today is let you hear some of the things that my students had to say about their experience in marching band. 
One student says, marching band is the most important experience I have ever had in my life, and I will take it with me no matter which direction I go. The friends I've made, the trials I've gone through, the physical struggles, the many tears of both joy and sadness. I am eternally grateful for the Davis High Band and what blessings and lessons it has brought me. Why did we spend all of that time? Why did we invest all of those hours? It was because we were making a difference that was not going to just be a difference for all those students who were in high school, but something that they would carry with them for the rest of your life. You're making a decision now, and I hope that you decide to be a part of a marching band and part of building a culture at your school, at Brighton High School, where you have an opportunity to be the beginning of something that's going to be absolutely incredible. Congratulations to you for listening and for being a part, and I wish you the best. Hey, marching band. It's Principal Tom Sherwood. I just want to tell everybody good luck. Um, I wish you guys the best. Um, you guys are a great group, but I'm looking forward to working with you. Have a great summer. All right. So, again, I hope um, those people, I, like I said, I got overwhelming responses to that um, question. And it, I had to cut down a lot of their responses and com exclude people completely. So um, just know that everybody's rooting for you, Brighton Band. We are so excited to get started. Um, and there, there are just so many reasons why to jump in. So um, just do it. It's it's going to be great. We, we have a great time. Um, okay, so the next um, few minutes or so are going to be more logistical. I'm going to just walk you through kind of what you need to do to get started on um, joining this ensemble. So without further ado, let's go ahead and jump in. Oh, nope, I lied. I lied. We changed the agenda. I don't want to leave my booster parents hanging. So without further ado, I'm going to turn the time over to them and let them talk a little bit about what happens in the um, booster world as well as um, what they do and how they need your help. We were planning on doing this at the end, um, but it, I don't want to keep them here for an hour while I talk. So let me jump over here to Mr. Eric Middlestat. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks, Michaela. We're super excited about all those logistics, too. Um, <laughs> but yeah, we're happy to have a chance uh, to talk to everyone and try to express um, how exciting this really is. You heard some of it in that video that Michaela just, just played. Um, our daughter marched with the Elta High Marching Band last year. A few of the kids from Brighton went to Elta and marched with their band. Um, we met the parents involved over there who were great people, and they told us this is going to be the coolest thing you've never heard of. Uh, and they were exactly right. The competitions, um, seeing the kids in their uniforms, the way they move in unison, uh, the performances, the music, it's all just incredibly cool and exciting. Um, as a parent, if you're, if you're living by vicariously through your kids a little bit. Um, there's actually some of the parents are needed to help move equipment onto the field and get it set up. And then you run up into the stands and watch the performance. They have to run back down and get the stuff off the field because there's a there's a time limit uh, that they have to be on and off the field in. So it really is, it's an athletic competition. Um, it really is athletic. It's amazing what these kids do. And it's just a lot of fun and a great community. Um, one of the things we loved about it is that um, – there were bands from all over the state. There was a little band from down in Southern Utah that had maybe 12 or 13 kids in it who traveled up and played and all the other bands um, cheered so loud for those kids. You know, they're, they're in a competition, they're trying to win, but they also all support each other in such an amazing way. Um, so it's just a, a really cool community and a cool thing to be part of. Um, so we're inviting you to be part of that. The Brighton Band needs your help. Um, the Booster Club, there's a sign-up genius that Michaela, Miss Morton is going to share with you. And you can sign up to help bring food donations or help serve food at these events. We feed all the kids at the events. You can sign up to be parts of, part of this pits and props team to move equipment back and forth and help the kids move in the equipment. Um, as you're seeing on your screen now, there's uh, music advocacy and fundraising, the uniforms team keeping the kids looking sharp, there's a tech team, um, there's amplifiers and different things around that, um, the pits and prop, props crew will uh, 
We'll build the props for the show in here in a little bit. We're going to find out what the show is, and Miss Martinson will tell us what props she needs built. Um, so just a lot of things we need parental help with. And believe me, it's just a, a really cool thing to be part of. Um, at the Sign Up Genius, we're asking that you sign up to be part of a team where we can help get your help. Uh, whatever seems most attractive to you, just get your name in there and we can use your help. We've got great committee leaders for each of these teams, people who have already volunteered to lead these teams, um, and we're very appreciative of them, and they're going to help you. So we just really need everyone to sign up for something, and then you're also going to sign up for an event. And, you know, with our kids last year, these great kids from Brighton that went over to Alta, we went to every event. We didn't miss one. Uh, they were just too much fun. But if you just can volunteer to come to one event and see them, you're going to want to do that anyway, and then help feed them there, help get the the equipment on the field. Um, just uh, sign up for those couple of things on the sign up genius. And then we'll be back in touch with you um, as we get the season started. Awesome. Thank you, Eric. Um, I just want to point out um, what I was showing while he was talking. So there are two places you can access that sign up genius. One is on the marching band page, but also if you're just a little more curious about boosters in general, you'll be hearing about this in the fall. Um, but this just kind of talks through what they are, what they do, some, um, you know, answer our, um, any common questions you might have. Um, we do have our parents who are working with students. So like, for example, Eileen Murdoch is our uh, uniform head. She'll be measuring students for uniforms um, when we get back together and um, she needs to be background checked. And she is in order to make sure that, you know, we're, we're doing that all safely. So any uh, parents who are working directly with students like that, we, we send them through that uh, portal. Um, really quickly, you can find um, access to the booster team here um, and also the committee heads this just brings you uh, I'll be honest I just I didn't want to have to re change it on the website every year so this um, shows all of their emails though um, and you can access them through this little uh, Google link um, so again just know that we have awesome parents here at Brighton, but we cannot do it without you. Um, again, we were going to kind of talk through what the season would look like so you understood better what we're asking you to do. Um, but just know that you guys are um, essential to the success of this ensemble in particular. There is nothing like it at the high school level. Um, thank you. Again, appreciate the middle stats. Um, thank you for being here and um, being willing to chat with everybody today. Thank you, Renee Hunter as well, our, our vice president. Um, you'll be probably getting emails a lot from Renee. Um, okay, so jumping in um, to the next item of business is I want to walk you through just kind of all of the paperwork, all of the things that um, entail the marching band season, talk about uh, fees, schedules, um, just kind of generally what you can expect. Um, so that way there are just no questions. I know, and but please, if you have any questions, reach out. Either the booster parents or myself or even your middle school teachers can help answer them. Um, that's what we're here to do. Uh, if I had had a perfect scenario, we would have, you know, been in a auditorium together and it would have been a little bit more personal. Um, but that being said, this is the situation we're in and we're going to make the best of it. So Again, jumping back over to the website. So this is brightonbengalmusic.com. You can access this through the school's website. Um, you can Google search us. We'll come right up. Um, so however you choose to access it, um, you'll need to come over here to Ensembles, and you can go and do some exploring. Um, you can kind of see that, uh, you know, this is my menu bar up here, but um, you're going to go down to Fall Competitive Marching Band. And just to FYI, that is a um, illustration of our uniform. If you didn't get a chance to watch our uniform reveal video, um, we do have that fe featured down here in our videos. Um, so this is where you can find some information about us. The most important thing that you get from today is, one, we need you to um, sign up for these booster events once you decide you're, you're moving forward with it. But also, just take this marching band contract and make it, um, for lack of a better term, your band Bible. This will tell you a lot of the information that you need to know. Um, so that, that link I just clicked on takes you to our marching band Dropbox, or not Dropbox, excuse me, Google Drive. And um, you can see that I've already got places for Color Guard, Drum Major, Drum Line auditions. We have not uploaded the material to those yet, but they will be uploaded shortly. So Drumline um, and just uh, percussion folks, that you can find the information you need here. Um, drum majors have already been selected, but so it's kind of redundant. Um, and then Color Guard um, auditions. Again, 
moving forward, I'll, I'll talk a little bit about COVID and kind of what that means for our season, um, but we'll probably still have some online portions of the beginning of the season, like those auditions. Um, papers and forms, if you need them. Um, and then I will be posting music. So this is um, their show music, any parade tunes that we might get. Um, obviously, we won't. Well, we'll talk about that. Um, but just know that anything you need there will be posted. I also even have the agenda here just so you could follow along if you wanted to. Pardon my notes on that, by the way. So we're going to go over here to forms. And the most, again, important one that you access right here is the marching band contract. Okay, This is a document made of gold. Not really, but we're going to pretend. Um, but it's really important that you go and read through this thoroughly. It really does explain a lot of the inner workings of what you can expect this season, um, as well as gives some specific breakdowns of uh, a lot of things. Um, we already kind of did the video for this, so I'm not going to re reiterate it, but just um, there are a lot of reasons to join marching band. I know there are a lot of things on your kid's plate, but it to be honest, um, for me, it changed my life. Obviously, I'm here. Um, I've been telling the kids when I visit to the middle schools, and I've told my students this, but that's that's where I met my future husband, that we're supposed to be getting married this summer, and, um, you know, hopefully that'll still happen, but... Um, it's, it's just an incredible activity. You meet amazing people. Um, a lot of the people who are on that Google call are people who are near and dear to me. And um, it's just a wonderful, wonderful thing. So we already talked about the volunteers with the booster program. But um, this is just reiterating who our booster chairs are. You can also find their emails on this document. So if you're more of a paper person and you just want to go and you know stick this up on your fridge, that's great. Go ahead and stick it up there and you can access it that way. Um, communication. So this is probably the most important thing moving into the season. Once you decide that you want to participate, it is crucial that we get you in the right systems so that way we can communicate, especially um, for my incoming ninth graders. You guys um, are not in the school system yet. Um, I don't have access to you outside of just talking to the middle school teachers. And it's pretty crucial that um, we get you in our system um, cut time so we can email you and contact you and keep you informed on what's going on. Um, it, it, marching band is a thing that requires many moving parts and so we want to make sure that you are um, informed. Okay, so um, what you need to do to make sure you get into our system is first make sure you read through the contract and go through it. Once you decide that you want to join, um, all you need to do is turn in the contract and then go to join cut time. Cut time is a system we use at Brighton to manage everything. We use it for our email, we use it for our inventory, uniform assignments, music library stuff. Um, it takes attendance. It'll be doing that for marching band this year. It's a really powerful tool. Um, our boosters have access to it so they can help us do what we've got to do. Um, so it is crucial that you and your student join cut time. Um, and I will show you on our website where you can find information about that. Um, so again, you jump on here and then you just follow the cut time link and instructions. Um, again, that's not something that needs to happen immediately. But once your contract is in, that's we're going to be checking to see if you get put into the system. So please make sure that by the time things start happening in late July, that you are ready to go and you're in this system. Um, but again, most important thing you can do right now is turn in this contract um, so we know that you want to participate. Um, okay, I hope that makes sense. Again, feel free to email or drop any questions on the Facebook pages. I'm happy to answer them. That's why I was kind of hoping to do this live so I could at least see them streaming in. Um, oh. Excuse me, that date's wrong. Uh, that should say May 5th. So all you need to worry about right now in order to pay fees and register is you need to turn in the contract. Please read the entire contract, which we're going to walk through today, um, and then um, fill it out and make sure you turn it in. Um, if you would not... If you don't want to go to the main office because of the situation at hand, um, feel free to email it to me um, and we can accept it that way. Or if you, um, you know, want to d drop it off at the front office, that's fine. Just uh, make sure it's getting to me one way or the other. Um, and then 
um, really important. Um, so I'm sure you're saying, how do I pay? Um, if you can't pay um, in person, you can call the office and they'll happily take your, your $150 deposit for marching band. That just helps us ensure that we are going to keep your spot. It's just like when we travel. Um, it costs us money to make sure we have students um, have a spot. Once we say that your student is participating, we give them a drill spot, which is the, the, the marks on the field where the students go, as well as music and all kinds of supplies. So it's really crucial that we know you're serious when you turn in your marching band registration form. Um, and it, we really, once you decide to be in it, we, we need you there and we need you participating. Um, so again, moving on, um, if once you turn in your form, you will see your other fees populate on cut time um, once you get registered and in the system. That's where another thing we use um, to manage um, or what we manage in cut time is our fees. Um, the, the Skyward portal is just not strong enough to really do what we need it to do and it doesn't allow you to really be able to see what's going on so we like using um, our uh, you know cut time system so you can see what your students fundraised and how it can be credited and all of that. Um, Again, the only thing you need to worry about is getting the contract in and with your deposit if possible. Um, if, you know, circumstances don't allow you to get the $150 deposit in, just let me know and communicate with me. That's all I ask. I know that we're living in historic times and it's, uh, I'll be honest, it's crazy trying to start a marching band right now, but here we are and we're going to be great. So um, just know that uh, this has been a dream of mine personally for a long time. We are just so excited to get this started. I, I really think it's going to be a phenomenal, phenomenal thing for our community. And we've just got so many people who are rooting for us. So um, get excited because it's, it's going to be great. Okay, jumping into the next thing just so we can make sure it's up, out in front and um, open. So we're obviously living in the historic times. Um, to be honest, I can't tell you exactly what to expect. Um, we did make a judgment um, and uh, Mr. Shabisteri and I did decide to cancel the all uh, Canyons All District Marching Band um, activities this summer. So that was for sixth through eighth grade. Eighth graders were invited to that. Additionally, to the ninth through twelfth, um, they are no longer um, going to be able to participate this summer in our activities because of the cancellation of um, parades and things like that. So I, I put a statement here. Um, if your child is an sixth through eighth grader and is just dying to participate in some way, just reach out. We can find a way for them to get involved. There's jobs and things that need to be done as well as um, we can invite them to Friday Night Lights um, with the, the marching band. Um, again, I don't want anybody to feel left out because of the unique circumstances we're in. As far as how it affects our fall season, so again, that was our summer season that got canceled. That is just parades and the activities in June um, and the parades in July. Um, there are other activities that start taking place in late July, um, and it'll be really just dependent on how everything develops. So um, again, Mega Band's not happening, so our rehearsals will start taking place in mid-July. Um, there have been two rehearsal dates added to the calendar to make up for the ones we removed. Um, it'll be a, we, I think I called it basics camp, and we'll go over that here in just a second. Um, it's, it's possible if that the um, Activities Association or Canyon School District, Brighton High School or the governor, if anybody decides that we have to social distance um, through July and August and maybe even to the school year, um, there is a reality that we could be looking at that our marching band season might not happen. I don't want to say this to freak kids out. I don't want to say this to make everybody worried. I just want to make sure that you understand that I'm paying attention to it. Um, our administration is supportive of us moving forward with everything. They think we're going to be fine. There might be some small things we need to adjust. But overall, um, I'm, I'm optimistic that that will not happen. But um, in the case that that did happen, of course, we'd find ways to um, refund any fees you've paid and things like that. Um, so again, um, just keep communicating with me um, about any concerns you might have there. Um, like I said, we're moving forward with a regular fall season, I should say, um, and I really do think we'll be okay. Um, just know that the information could also change um, without a ton of notice. Um, as soon as I get information, I try to push it out to our community um, as soon as I can. So again, um, I just wanted to make sure everybody understood those 
those activities there. Okay, let's see. Jumping back over here. Doo -doo -doo -doo. Okay, so unfortunately, marching band is not free. I wish I could make it that way. Um, it's an amazing activity, but it is one that requires um, funding, and it is something that is um, just... There, there are so many moving parts and so many elements that it becomes 100% worth it. But um, we do need to make sure that, you know, we are collecting fees for this, um, just like we would for any other athletic sport. So um, just the fee breakdown, um, just so you know some of the things that the fees go to. So this is some of our camps, our clinics. Um, we get custom arranged music and drill. Um, drill is the pictures on the field um, and choreography for those of you who are new. Um, it goes to our flags and any equipment we might get. Um, the food that we feed your kids with and the staff and um, everybody. Um, it pays for your staff. All those lovely people you just met, um, we have to pay them. I know, weird to teach your kids, um, but we want to pay them because they're worth it and they're amazing. Um, the, the uniform, we have to maintain that as well as order it and all of that stuff. Um, and any show shirt we might give your students, things like that. Cleaning um, goes into these fees. So again, you can see kind of what these go towards um, and just kind of a breakdown of what that looks like. Um, then, um, so we will be traveling um, overnight. Um, those of you who marched Alta, I know you guys didn't travel last year. Um, they are this year as well, but we are going to be traveling on an overnight trip to St. George. That is where our state championship and BOA regional will be held. Um, you'll be getting more information about that trip, but that is just explaining the cost of what it takes to get a you know charter bus full of students down there with hotels and all of those things. Um, if your student needs to rent an instrument, so typically people who need to rent an instrument are um, in the brass section, um, if you are a um, trombone or a euphonium, um, you will be playing a marching baritone, um, so that is kind of like a... Um, thick trumpet that faces forward. It's, it's like a baritone, but it faces forward so you can hear the sound. Um, tuba people will be playing sousaphones, which are those big funny tubas you see people wearing around their, their bodies. Um, if um, we have a, a flute player or two who wants to play piccolo, um, that would include them as well. Um, any and all of our drum line and front ensemble people will need to rent their instrument. And I do want to preface it with... Um, if you are renting an instrument from me already, um, don't worry about it. This, if you, So if like your student needs a French horn, oh, I left out the French horns. If you play French horn, you're going to be playing mellophone. Um, so a mellophone is a marching French horn. That being said, if you are a person who plays French horn, I'm not going to charge you twice. Um, I'm not going to make you pay $80 for a French horn and $80 for a mellophone. Um, just promise me that you'll take good care of those things and um, we'll be able to continue that policy. So again, $80 for a rental instrument if you need one. Um, and it kind of breaks that down. It shows the breakdown. Um, the red you see is because of the cancellations. So it, we used to have a $100 fee for summer band. Um, now that is canceled, so I took that out. And you can see the new totals down here at the bottom. Um, I recognize that, especially in this time, um, that this can be stressful for families. Um, but just know that um, as a student who came from not a lot of means, um, it really is an activity that will change your kid's life. Um, and we will be providing opportunities for them to fundraise. Um, I absolutely expect them, if they need to, um, to put in work themselves, though. So, um, you know, we've got some things we could talk about. Feel free to explore the website, um, and we'll be breaking that down more for you. But um, just so you kind of understand that... I I wish I could make it free, um, but I can't. Um, but your student really would benefit a lot from this. Um, so again, that's just the fee breakdown. Um, I put the payment schedule. So again, May 5th is when our contracts are due, and that's when your $100 deposit is due. We don't need to worry about some of our mega band anymore. I might push back these dates depending on what the access to the front office looks like, um, so keep your ears open. But for now, I'm keeping these dates just so they're consistent on the calendar. Um, June 17th for the first half of fees, um, and if you need an instrument rental, that's when that is due, and then July 15th for the other half. And if um, most of you will probably need shoes 
and a compression shirt. We'll talk about that in a minute. But um, that is what you will also, when you also be getting those and paying for those items. Okay, moving right along. Dates and schedules. So most secondary importance to what you should be worrying about in terms of uh, communication. So making sure that you're signed up on cut time is crucial so you get our emails. The second thing is I would recommend you just go and follow our calendar um, and add it to your own calendar. Um, I've provided on our website under the calendar some instructions. I also included it here um, so you can kind of see what that looks like. Um, I also, if you're not a technology person, I know those people exist. I did include in our marching band folder, let's see, I think I have it on this one. Nope, just kidding. Um, I did include, oh, here it is. Uh, oh, well, um, the marching band calendar over here. So if you want to just print that out and stick it to your fridge, that's absolutely a-okay. So again, however you access the calendar, there are things, especially right now, that are subject to change. So I just want you to make sure you're staying informed. This is the best way to do it. So as I change things, you can see them in an instant. Um, I'll send out lots of emails if I ever have to change things as well, but just it's a great way to stay informed so you don't accidentally look at your paper calendar and you know miss information. Uh, just because a, a date or time or something adjusted slightly. Um, so absences. Um, I understand that, you know, uh, maybe not now, but a lot of us have summer plans, church camps, family vacations, things like that. Um, but it is essential that you look at the schedule now and make sure that um, you are going to be able to participate in the required camps. Um, during the summer mega band, we're pretty flexible with um, your, your schedule. Um, we are willing to um, work with you and you know accommodate those camps but the uh, um, and um, events but on the required um, uh, camps that we host with the marching band it is really crucial that your student is there once we get into the fall season um, the students will be rehearsing um, a little bit in class but mostly it's an after school um, activity um, and I'll go through what that schedule looks like here in a moment. But um, you can have up to three excused absences, and that means you're filling out the absence request form. Um, and we'll go over what that looks like. But it's really crucial that um, you get that request in um, with enough time because this is a team activity, even more so than our normal band classes um, and normal activities like that because of the nature of us moving around on the field. If your student is, isn't there, it can be a detriment to the group. Um, so we really encourage you to be at every rehearsal. Um, but again, just know that if you have a um, thing that you absolutely can't avoid, you're going on a long weekend trip, um, as long as it's not over a show and it's only rehearsals, you should be okay. Um, you should not be missing performances. We don't put that many on the calendar for a reason. Um, a lot of bands do, you know, up to 10 shows. I have only chosen to do um, five, and two of those are in our one weekend. So it's it's really crucial that you look ahead and make sure you plan these dates. Um, we need our students at these events, um, no exceptions. Um, of course, if something happens, you know, there's a death in the family, um, those types of things, just please communicate. That's all I ask. Um, again, required camps are essential, um, and we'll go over what those are. Um, again, read through this and just email me if you have any questions or um, specific dates even. Just ask questions. I would much rather answer now than in August when I'm learning that you're going on vacation. Um, so I, again, I did a breakdown here. Um, if you're more, again, this is a thing you could post on your fridge. Um, so preseason stuff, this is before we actually start. Um, May 5th is when your registration is due. Um, the clothing order form, we'll go over that at the end of the contract is due. Um, and then you do need to submit a physical form. So one of the wonderful things about Brighton's marching band is they the students get marching band credit as well as they get um, PE credit. It goes for their elective PE credit. It does not cover Fitness for Life. I wish it did, um, but it can cover their elective PE credits. So um, please make sure that they get these physical forms filled out and submitted to the Activities Association. You can find that 
over here on our web page, except for I'm on the wrong one. Um, right down here. You maybe I can stop scrolling past it. Um, again, super, super crucial that you get those things in and follow those dates. Um, again, I put in red the things that were canceled. So we would have had, you know, a rehearsal May 18th and then this camp um, where we taught your students how to march and taught them all of the parade tunes. And it would have been fun because we would have collaborated with Alta and um, other students from the district. Um, but unfortunately, we just said it was simpler to make sure that, you know, yeah, we kept our students safe as well as um, just were able to plan a little bit. Um, there is a student leadership retreat. So we will be announcing um, after the end of May, students, that's when your leadership forms are due. Um, we will be announcing when, uh, if this changes, when it changes too. So students, um, just know that if you're in leadership, you will have a retreat where we work on leadership type things. Um, okay, so important note, the asterisks um, things are our required camps, okay? Um, note that this one is the one that we did to make up for all of these dates. Um, I know that, uh, what is that, like seven, eight days of um, rehearsal does not exchange well for two, but I'm just playing it safe because I know a lot of you probably had already started to look at these schedules um, and... I'm trying to help you out as best as I can. So um, these two dates are now going to be where we teach our members um, how to march. Um, you'll probably be seeing information coming through a little bit sooner to get the students started at home, um, just given the current circumstances. But um, the good news is and the bad news is, is we're all in the same boat. So uh, marching bands everywhere are probably starting at about this time. Um, Students will be doing sectionals organized by section leaders. Again, it'll really depend on what the situation looks like in July, but um, we will be expecting students to work together like that. Um, our next camp, sections camp. So, um, and again, I don't think I mentioned on here, you can find them on the calendar, but this will be an eight to noon rehearsal um, on the 16th and 17th. Um, this week, it'll be eight to two. Um, this is where we start learning all of our show music. The students will have had it for a while, but um, we expect them to come with it as memorized as possible. Um, and then we start putting it together um, for the entire ensemble. We'll revisit some marching techniques because keep in mind that we're kind of on a fast timeline this year. Um, so we'll introduce students to some marching techniques um, as well as um, their music here. Um, that's our sections camp. They'll be working in their sections a lot. And then in July, this is probably the most important date on the calendar. It's July 27th through the 31st. This is required for all marching band members as well as these other two dates. This is band camp, the epic legendary band camp. This is where your students will be learning all of the drill. Um, again, that's the pictures on the fields. Um, it's so crucial that they are there. If they miss this day, it is virtually impossible to catch them up throughout the season. Um, I honor your students' time. I only put what I needed to, I think, be successful on the calendar this year. There are many bands who rehearse a lot more than we will. Um, so I really need you to make sure that you are putting value in these dates. Um, again, especially band camp, because that is where the students will be learning everything they need to know for our show. Um, there is a couple of rehearsals on the calendar you can see before school starts. Um, and then we will jump into the fall rehearsal schedule. It happens Mondays and Thursdays from 3.15 to 5.30 after school, and Wednesdays from 5 to 8. Um, these will be outdoor rehearsals, and we'll talk about kind of what that looks like from a equipment standpoint. Students will also be playing at the football games, which um, anybody who's been a part of the Brighton Band up to this point knows that we make a big deal out of um, our Friday Night Lights. So um, this is just taking it one step further. Um, I explained the call time of when the football games are at. Those are not yet on the calendar because they have not yet confirmed the dates. We don't have as many home games this year. Um, so woohoo for that, I guess, with the construction. So, um, but that being said, please make sure you're watching for those days. As soon as I get them, I will announce them to everyone. Um, we would have had summer parades, but they have been canceled. So you can see those dates in red. I just wanted you to know that they were there. 
All right, the next thing, our competitions. So this is a competitive fall marching band. Yes, we do Friday Night Lights and we perform for our community, um, but we also compete. Um, these competitions, as the middle stat said, are so fun, so amazing. Um, and hopefully a lot of you joined us last year at one of them for our, um, not fundraiser, our um, field trip. So it's, it's a thing that just, you have to experience it before you really truly understand what they're like. Um, but the competitions are required. We need all of our students there. Um, again, one student gone can be a huge detriment to our show. Um, so especially where we're a younger band, we really are counting on everybody to make sure that they are there and attending all of that. Um, I don't have um, times yet because we have to find out what size we are before we know what um, group we're competing in. So um, as soon as we have that information, I'll be sending it out and blast to, to all the parents. But please put these dates on your calendar. October 3rd, that's up at the Utah State um, Stadium. Then we have October 10th, that's down at American Fork High School. Uh, the Davis Cup is at Weber this year. It's different than in years past, um, which will be really cool. Um, these are all Saturdays, by the way. Um, I really, there are some weekday competitions. I try really hard to not do those, to do those because your students need rest. Um, and sometimes these events go late um, and I want to make sure that they have that. Um, then you can see the dates for our overnight trip, October 30th and 31st. Again, I'll, I didn't want to overwhelm you with all of the details of the travel on this document. So just know that that's coming, but please block off these two days in your calendar. That's a Friday, Saturday. Um, the uh, last important date is our band bash. This is where we're going to get together with our uh, middle school teachers. And we'll probably do this in the gym uh, just so we can all fit. And we're going to share some music uh, both in our normal concert band setting as well as the marching band will be performing um, their show. Um, it's a, been a tradition in a lot of places and I think it's going to be a great one that we add to our season. One thing I wanted to note, um, we are unique at Brighton in that we are on the trimester schedule. Um, so for those of you baby parents who marched at another place, this might look different than what you've done in the past. The good news is, is it really does kind of play into our advantage if we play, do it right. And I, I did a lot of research. Um, those of you who know I was involved with the flex schedule and adding that into our school um, to allow your students to participate in music all year. If your students enrolled in band, doesn't matter if they're in marching band or not, um, they are in my class all year. Um, and the flex schedule now allows for them to do that in a very, very possible way. And that's a conversation for another day. Um, what I want to make sure everybody understands um, is that um, for the first trimester, there will be kind of an in-school element that we utilize. Um, I modeled this after another school up in Cache County that um, is on the trimester schedule. So anybody who is in marching band and is a wind player um, will be enrolled in fourth period. Um, it'll be titled symphonic band. Um, they will go back to their auditioned or non-auditioned group in second and third trimester, just like they will on their roster. But for that first trimester, students in marching band will be in my fourth period class. Students who are not in marching band and are a wind player, that's brass and woodwinds, um, will be in second period. Um, so percussion will stay in percussion, that's first period all year. And my color guard folks, um, for now, we are not doing a class. Um, that's something we might look into in the future um, for you as well. But for now, um, just to make sure we're getting this started um, gradually, we decided to leave you as an after-school only participant. So um, Color Guard folks, you will be at rehearsals after school, but you will not have a component in your school day. So again, parents, as you're planning your schedules, you need to make sure that um, you are planning for all three trimesters of band or percussion, um, as well as making sure that um, when your schedules do populate, that you are in the right spot. So again, fourth period symphonic and second period concert band for first trimester. Um, if you have any questions about that, please reach out. Um, it's all new, um, and I'll be honest, this is my you know first go of being at Brighton with a trimester schedule so we're still learning how to make it work for us um, okay so this is gets into the contract a lot of this stuff is reiterated but um, it goes over the attendance policy explains um, what's required and what is not 
um, and all of that good stuff. So I'll let you read that on your own. Um, it, this is a class, even the after school component is a class. Credit will be given um, and a grade will be given. So it is something that, um, you know, I don't like to use grades. We all know your student isn't doing this for the grade. But that being said, um, please make sure that they're um, staying on top of their attendance. That's really that and making sure they practice their music is the only thing that can prevent them from getting a good grade in marching band. Um, we want them to do well because they're all amazing students and we all know music students are the smartest. Um, again, explain summer band absences, fall band absences. Um, what to do if you need an absence excused. So this is super crucial. Hopping back over here to my website. I did include the absence request form here. This is a Google form where you can go and fill out your information. And what it actually does is it sends me a um, email um, with your, your request. And I can approve, disapprove, or postpone, or not postpone, uh, comment on it. And it will hopefully send it back to you. Students, I think um, sometimes when you put in your CSD docs, it doesn't send it back to you. So you sometimes ask me, oh, did, did that come through? Um, but if you ever wonder, I have a spreadsheet that it goes into and I can tell you whether or not you were approved. Basically, if you're following the policies and you're giving me the two weeks I ask for um, and it's not a crucial, crucial rehearsal, then you're fine. Um, keep in mind... Rehearsals should not be missed for things like doctor's appointments unless it's extenuating circumstances. If your child is super sick and that's the only time you can get in to see a specialist, that's very different than I'm doing my eye doctor checkup. Okay, um, Please try to avoid scheduling those things during band time. It doesn't just hurt your child, it hurts the entire group's um, efforts. Um, again, you need to be participating in a band class all year. Some other expectations. Um, Music must be memorized by designated uh, deadlines. I'll be sending out emails, pl uh, plenty parents, just saying, okay, your student should be doing this. Um, a staff member might decide um, that your student needs additional pass-offs to help them stay accountable, um, and I'll be included in that conversation as well. But know that music memorization and practice is vital. Um, we cannot simply spoon feed every note and rhythm of your the music to your students. We've made sure it's an appropriate level um, for us as we're beginning this journey through a marching band, but your job is to students to make sure that you are completing this, okay? Drill. Students will be memorizing their drill, but they will be expected to have what we call a dot book. We'll go over more of what that means, um, but essentially it keeps track of your uh, plots on the field for you. Um, but students will be working through that. We will be learning that in rehearsal. We are not expecting students to go home and learn these because they don't have a football field at home. But that being said, um, it doesn't hurt to review them mentally. So the drill is really, really crucial as well. Eligibility. It is crucial that your student stays eligible so that they can participate. Um, since it's an activities association um, activity, it's crucial that you make sure that your uh, GPA is staying above a 2.0, okay? Um, we'll be checking on those students in June. I know that things are up in the air with grades and everything right now, so just keep keep asking questions, keep getting help where you need it. Your teachers, and myself included, are wanting to help you. Um, this is just stating, so fees, parents, um, when once you turn in this contract, it is a binding contract. Um, we are planning on your student we need you to make sure that you are planning um, financially for this, okay? Um, once you decide to turn in this contract, you are opting in to be a part of the marching band, um, and it opts you in to pay those fees. Um, if you are on fee waiver, go talk to the front office. They'll take care of you. Um, but other, please don't just ignore it. Um, you must be bringing me receipts showing that you have paid the marching band fees, okay? Um, Let's see. Um, and it, even if you decide, you know, maybe you decide that marching band isn't for you in, you know, August or September once we have already gotten going, even if you stop coming to rehearsal, we will still hold you financially um, accountable for it. Um, it, it really, it's a spot that you have been given. Um, so we need you there. Of course, we want you to stick it out through the season because it's a great activity. And um, all those students and people who you talked to at the beginning of this can vouch that there will be days where your child will um, struggle. There will be days where it's hard. Um, they're tired. Um, but 
it's really, it's so worth it. It's that um, type three fun where, you know, it sometimes in the moment, it seems like it's a lot of hard work, but when you look back on it, it was some of your best memories. Um, parents, I encourage you to keep your student engaged with it. Um, fundraisers. Um, we don't like to do a lot of fundraisers as to not overwhelm our students, but that being said, there will be a crowdsource fundraiser you'll be hearing about. That'll be a chance for the students to fundraise individually. It'll be a really easy one. They're not selling anything, so that'll hopefully work better with the COVID situation. Um, and they can just, um, you know, reach out to family and friends and anybody and have them donate to this little um, thing. We'll give more information on that, but a crowdsourcing uh, fundraiser will be the one you use to help your student pay for their marching band fees as an individual. We might also do some fundraisers that are for the group. This helps uh, offset any other costs. Again, helps us pay for our staff, um, equipment, all of these wonderful things. Just generally other expectations. Um, I expect your students to have a good attitude. Those of you who have been in my program, you know that I, I expect a lot out of your kids. Um, but it's, it's all for good reason because we have built an amazing culture already in just a few short years and we're going to keep that going. Um, but we need you to help us continue it on. So represent your student and community well. Demonstrate enthusiasm. Um, you know, be prepared um, for your rehearsals. Um, if you're not practicing your music and if you're not memorizing it, you make it hard for us to move on. Um, communicate anything that's going on. If you run into issues to the staff and myself, please. Um, if you experience failure, this is so crucial, everyone. It is essential that your students experience failure, in my opinion. Uh, it is the only way they grow as people. Um, and the, the, the way we um, show who we are is how we deal with it. Um, I had a big failure today with um, this, this video stream, um, but that's not going to stop us, right? We, we pick up ourselves, we analyze what's wrong with the situation, and we make a plan to improve, and we, we go on. Um, just again, make sure your students are ready to be um, mentally, physically, and technically read, ready for these rehearsals and performances. Um, again, marching band will be one of the most tiring, but also the most rewarding things your student does. Um, I'm going to let you read through these rehearsal expectations, but just my students over the last three years have slowly started to figure this out. Being on time does not mean you're walking in um, right when the student is supposed to be there. So like 3.15 is rehearsal start time. It doesn't mean you're walking onto the field or in the door at that time. You're expected to be ready to rehearse um, at that time. So I encourage students to get there at least five to 10 minutes beforehand. Um, take care of anything they need to, whether it's instrument assembly, bathroom, all that stuff. Um, Parents, I know it's hard to plan um, when you have busy lives. Um, I always tell the kids, if you struggle, tell your parent to get you there You know, 15 minutes earlier. Tell them it's at 3 o'clock instead of 3.15. I was one of those students, so parents, help them out. Be supportive of them being on time because it is crucial to the success of this group. Um, there's some other things um, that are more rehearsal etiquette. Students, I want you to take a look at that. Um, required materials. We, this is an athletic activity. Marching band is actually an incredibly athletic activity. Um, it, the overuse injuries are not uncommon if students don't take care of themselves. So it's crucial that you wear appropriate clothing. That's um, athletic clothing. We'll go more about that um, as we get closer to camp. But athletic shoes, if you don't have a good pair of cross trainers, um, I recommend you invest. Um, Happy feet are a happy child, okay? Is a happy child, I should say. Um, uniform, you might be given a t-shirt, a compression shirt, and the full uniform that you saw on the reveal. Um, it is important that your student takes care of these things. Um, backpack or some sort of rehearsal bag. I recommend a little drawstring bag is great for this um, to put their rehearsal materials in. They can just keep it in their locker. I'll let them keep it in their band locker. Um, a water bottle. Please, 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 please bring a big I like the big half gallon ones uh, or the gallon ones so you can sit on them. Um, kind of gross, but whatever. Um, bring a big water bottle. I'm happy to let the kids keep them in the band room. Um, instrument and instrument supplies. If you don't have reeds that work, you don't have an instrument. Okay. Um, music and binder with sheet protectors. Um, all music. So any music your student is given um, or asked to print in this case, it is crucial that they have those and are ready to go. Okay, um, please make sure that they're staying on top of it. There is a reach, uh, charge fee to um, reprint. 
Um, and it, it, it is hard for us to make sure we follow copyright when that happens. So please, 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 please take care of your stuff. Please wear sunscreen and hats and sunglasses. You must have these things for especially our camps. They'll be out in the sun a lot and it's hot in late July. Please make sure you have them. The dot book, we'll talk about that. We'll have a name badge for your students and pencils. Yes, multiple. Um, Kaylee Rowley, one of my true heroes, she's a flute player in the symphonic band, has like a whole organized thing that is amazing and full of pencils and highlighters and she always marks up her music in the most amazing ways. I encourage us to all take a leaf from Kaylee's book. So I know I've been talking for a long time, but that kind of summarizes the expectations and some of the policies um, of the marching band. If you scroll down, this um, I want you to keep this part. This is for you. This is so you can know what the expectations are. And parents, if you need backup, you know, when your kid's tired and they don't want to um, do some of the things that are on there, you can use this um, as, you, you know, your help. Um, Brighton High School contract. So this is what you need to turn into the front office or to me. Um, so, or if you want to email it, that's fine. Um, this is what will be populated into cut time. So please, please, please make sure it's um, accurate and that we can read your handwriting. Um, I, I wouldn't even mind if you typed it, honestly. Um, and then on the next page, this is the clothing order. So for most of us, this is an entirely new thing. Um, uh, the couple of kids who marched last year, we will be doing black shoes. So yay for you. You can keep your shoes from last year. But otherwise, um, all of these things are, um, you will need to order it. But then once you order it, you usually won't need to order it again unless your kid, your student, sorry, grows a lot. So um, the marching band shoes are something I wore for four years in high school. Um, we have shorts that they wear under the uniform. Um, we have really amazing uniforms, but they don't look good when we have really bunchy shorts. So we'll have um, really nice shorts for the students as well as a compression shirt to allow us to look our best. Um, again, assuming that your child doesn't grow too much, you can keep wearing these every year. We won't change these. Um, color guard, I just want to note, you'll be playing, um, you'll be taking care of your clothing items separately. Um, so this won't apply to you. Um, parents, if you want a shirt, um, you can fill one out, one of these out and we'll get you a show shirt. The kids all receive a like t-shirt that um, has our show theme on it. Um, but just so you know, um, that is there and um, I encourage you to have them. We also will have a store that opens up in the fall where you can order shirts that say like, I'm with the band and things like that. But um, this is a great way to make sure that you're, you know, looking like you're part of the crew. Um, and literally you will be kind of a pit crew, some of you. Okie doke. Um, I want to make sure I didn't miss anything. Um, I just want to reiterate to everyone how crucial it is that you realize that you're making a commitment um, to a lot of amazing students and staff members um, and your school. So um, take this commitment seriously. Please talk about it with your families. Plan. I know it's hard in this day and age, but um, you know we, we need you. We want you. Um, it is really an amazing activity, but we want to make sure that you are planning for things like your fees um, and the the schedule that it requires. So please, just that's all I'm going to ask as a, a parent. Um, you know that you're looking at this um, very seriously with your child. Um, we're super excited, though, guys. It's just it's it's going to be great. Um, Okay, really quickly, um, if you need anything, so you can access a lot of these things here. Um, like I showed you, the auditions were in this um, this uh, file. So students, um, drum majors, or not drum majors, drum line and color guard, I'll be sending out lots of information to everybody, just saying, hey, here's the information for um, your auditions. I actually, um, I know our drum captain got it to me today but um, I just didn't have time before this to upload it. Um, so again, just keep an eye on this Dropbox. That's really um, what I'm expecting you to do as far as those things go at this point. Um, one other thing to be aware of um, is that you're just watching your email and s making sure that those emails start coming in once we, we get you added to our cut time system. Um, once you're in the system, you can go and explore. That's a whole conversation for another day, but um, it's kind of, a crucial one. So please make sure you're following some of the stuff on the website. 
Um, at, at this point in the meeting, this is usually where I'd ask, are there any questions? And you would all think of amazing questions of things that I've completely missed um, and forgotten to talk about. Um, but I don't get to talk to you. Um, really quick, I don't know how many staff members are even on. Um, can anybody think of anything I might have missed? Um, drop it in the chat. Um, let's see. Renee asked a great one. Uh, can student use their, oh, yes. Um, so parents, for those of you who were going to travel with us on our spring tour to Disneyland um, that obviously got canceled because of the COVID situation, you can um, transfer those fees over. Um, we're still doing number crunching in the front office. It's actually quite complex, but um, you will be able to transfer that over, yes. Um, so if you fundraised students or if you have tour fees you'd like to spend on marching band, that's great. Keep in mind, we might end up traveling again this year. So um, just, you know, keep that in mind as you're making financial decisions. Uh, <laughs> there's a staff member conversation going on. All right. I don't think I missed anything. Um, but if you think of something, please don't hesitate to reach out. You can contact me through our Facebook page on the parent um, group which I encourage you to join. I populate some stuff there. You can email me. Um, you can smoke signals. Um, whatever um, works for you, um, please reach out. The good news is, is I'm at my computer a lot these days. Um, so just reach out and ask questions um, as you're making these decisions. Remember, all you need to worry about at this point is filling out the, this um, contract and turning it into me. That tells me that you want to be a part of this organization. Um, it helps me decide, put you in the right class for the fall and all of those other things. Um, I'm, I'm just so excited, Ben, and I, um, I'm going to get emotional, so I'm going to stop talking too much. But this has been a long time coming. I'm, I'm kind of sad that it has to happen this way, and I don't get to see your reactions to um, our show. And... Um, but I'm just so excited. Um, marching band is the thing that completely changed my life here. I'll make it so you can actually see me. How does that sound? Um, completely changed my life. Um, it turned me from a student who was pretty shy, who, um, I mean, I probably would have been okay, but I, I feel like I grew so much as a person in this activity. I went on to do some amazing things, met some amazing people because of the marching arts. Um, I truly believe it is beneficial in every way and um, you know it can bring almost nothing but good to your students that's why I push so hard for it um, and I believe it's a great thing for our community so um, staff members I'm super super excited for the season um, boosters I'm so excited and we're just um, we're ready to roll I'm ready to get out of my house um, so without further ado I know that you know nobody's watching except for the staff members but um, you'll all see this later but um, I do have the show announcement. I have to say, technology has not been my friend, um, so the video is a little clunky. I apologize for that, but um, I'm going to go ahead and present our show theme. Uh, let's see, and I still am presenting, right? I hope so. <laughs> um, okay, let's jump over here. I didn't even have time, y'all, to upload it, plus I didn't want the students to see it yet, so I've got to jump into iMovie, which is the one thing I forgot to do. Do, 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 thinking, maybe, iMovie. Thinking. Okie doke. Okay. Welcome to the jungle, we've got fun and games, we've got everything you want, honey we know the names, we are the people that can find whatever you may need. If you've got no money, honey, we've got your disease in the jungle. Welcome to the jungle, watch it bring it to your knees. So, 
Again, Sher Khan um, is our title of the marching band show for 2020. Um, just a really quick kind of summary on some of the inspirations for this. Um, so Sher Khan is the villain in the Jungle Book. Um, those of you who haven't maybe watched or seen that in a while. Um, we're more referencing less the Disney version and more the original book. But um, we decided to take a look at Sher Khan. Um, being the Bengals, um, we thought it was thematic and a cool first show for our first year out. Um, but um, essentially... Um, we are looking at Sher Khan through a different lens. We have decided that maybe he wasn't truly the villain in the Jungle Book, um, and that maybe um, some of the issues stem from um, man. And so um, just a quick summary of each movement. Movement one um, will roughly um, include music. Um, we, By the way, our, you saw our amazing uh, arranger, uh, Mr. Matthews. Um, a lot of the music we'll be using will actually be his original works, but it'll be um, using a lot of um, source material from other places. So um, movement one will greatly feature that um, rendition of Welcome to the Jungle that you just heard um, with a little bit of the flute solo that you you um, were hearing towards the end from the Jungle Book theme. Um, we'll open up to the jungle scene in Movement One, introduce our character, set our stage, um, and really we're just saying we're the king of the jungle. The, the Bengal tiger rolls the rules the world in the jungle. Movement Two um, will be where we introduce man. Um, we're not going to have Mowgli running around in this um, in this uh, rendition of our show, um, but it'll be kind of more in an abstract fashion. So you saw in the video, there were a lot of different um, industry type of um, things happening in nature. So it'll really have to do with a lot of toxicity um, and a lot of... Um, damage being done um, to the forest and to these um, creatures. Um, fire will play a crucial role in our show. Um, and that is, as we, if we've seen the Jungle Book, know that Shere Khan, the tiger, is truly afraid of man because of um, his use of fire. Um, the music being featured there will be some fun works. Um, Asphalt Cocktail by John Mackey um, will be in there. Um, we will have a Symphony of Destruction um, referenced by Megadeth. We will also be featuring um, another um, piece, um, Toxic by Britney Spears. Um, one of my favorite parts about marching band is you actually get to uh, use music that we don't play in band class very often. Um, so it'll be incorporating all of those things. Movement three will go into sort of a lament um, where we are sad that the um, jungle will have struggled and perished and probably looks very different. Um, we'll explain more as the show goes on, but um, it'll be a movement of sadness. Um, and we'll be using uh, Frank to Kelly. That was actually a piece that we, well, we, we didn't play uh, Frank this piece by Frank Tichelli, but we were playing one in symphonic band. This one will be Earth Song by Frank Tichelli. Um It's kind of a lament of the earth. And then movement four um, will be sort of a rising up, um, uh, bringing back uh, the jungle, um, strengthening together, um, uh, you know, and moving forward. I, I think... I, honestly, I was using this last movement as a way for us to show our resurrection of the marching band, our, you know, pushing through hard times and those types of things, but it seems pretty applicable now, given that we are in a struggling time, um, and it doesn't sometimes seem like we will recover, um, and this, this movement is meant to show that we will. So um, in the fourth movement, um, you'll hear the um, a little bit more bombastic version of Welcome to the Jungle. We'll come back as well as... Um, um, the Sam um, Corona, you called it, but uh, Katy Perry's roar. I promise it won't be cheesy. I promise you. I promise you. I promise you. It's going to be so cool. Um, I'm not releasing the music yet just because um, the written music that um, John has created for us, only because we need to make sure we secure a couple more things from a copyright standpoint. So um, that's your show, Share Con. Um, I included one of my favorite quotes from The Jungle Book. Um, that will likely be incorporated into your show. Um, so that's um, essentially it. Um, and I just, I hope you all know, I'm sorry that the live stream didn't work out, but I'm so excited for this season. I'm 
so incredibly humble to work with all of you students, parents, um, staff alike. Um, and I just, I can't wait to get excited for this show because your students are artists. They're incredible people. And if nothing else has been proven by this time, arts are needed. Um, we need these outlets for our students and this will be a great way to come back. So, um, great. I'm going to go ahead and stop this recording. But um, I appreciate you all being here, and go Bengal Marching Band! <laughs>